Hey guys, it's Megan. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today's video is my April favorites video and I know I say it every month but I'm gonna say it again because I cannot believe another month has gone by. Like I swear the months are just going by faster and faster and faster. We're almost at summer and I can't believe that that is even possible. Anyway, I have accumulated a lot of products this month that I really, really love. I apologize to all of my drugstore lovers out there. They are kind of expensive products, but I promise that I have a drugstore product video coming up very soon, so I will have some affordable makeup recommendations for you guys coming in the very near future. But without further ado, I'm just going to jump on in, and I guess we will start with body care. <music> My one body care favorite that I have this month is a body cream. It is the Jo Malone Wood Sage and Sea Salt Body Cream. This is obscenely expensive and I do not recommend that you go out and buy this. But if you do have an affinity for Jo Malone like I do, then it might be worth the money to you just to have. And the, I mean the packaging is beautiful, it's very heavy duty. And the product inside is really, really nice as well. I am personally a massive fan of the Woods Agency Salt Fragrance, so whenever I bought my, what, actually whenever I got my big bottle, Ryan bought it for me a couple, about a year and a half ago now I guess, I bought the body cream to go with it because I loved the scent and I really wanted to have something that would make it last longer on my skin. So I bought it and it sat on my desk for about a year without me touching it because it was so expensive that I didn't want to use it all up too soon. And I only recently have really forced myself to start pulling it out and using it. And the way that I am kind of prolonging the use and making it last longer is I exclusively use it on my arms. I already have it on my arms otherwise I would put it on to kind of demonstrate it for you guys but it's super thin and lightweight and it's not sticky or greasy and I suffer with really dry elbows so it's kind of a kills two birds with one stone kind of product for me. So it smells like my perfume, which I love, and I can layer my perfume over it and it doesn't mess with the scent at all. And my elbows are moisturized, so I can't complain about it. I really, really do love this. And again, I don't recommend that you go out and buy it because it is insanely expensive. But if you have an interest in trying this, it is a good product. <laughs> If you guys have been watching my YouTube channel since the beginning, you know that my hair has grown out pretty significantly since then. And the way that I really make sure I'm keeping my hair healthy is after shampooing, I apply conditioner to only about this section of my hair. And then the ends, I will add a deep conditioner or a hair mask like this one, the Kiehl's Olive Fruit Oil Deeply Reparative Hair Pack. So I take like three fingers and just scoop out a little bit of product and then just rub it into the ends of my hair and let it sit while I wash my face and then scrub my body and then rinse it out. And I just find that my hair is a lot softer, it feels a lot healthier, and that is my trick for making sure my hair stays healthy between haircuts. So I would totally recommend this and it's relatively affordable on the spectrum of hair masks. But there is a hair mask by L'Oreal that I also would recommend and I'll leave both linked down below along with everything else in this video. So yeah, that's my trick for keeping my hair healthy between cuts and keeping it healthy as I'm trying to grow it out. So I really have been enjoying this and would totally recommend trying it out. Next I have a little mini baby product. This is the Amika Silken Up Dry Conditioner. I have been a huge fan of dry shampoo for a really long time now and for the last couple of years I've been really into dry texturizing spray as well, but I had never tried a dry conditioner before. And I got this in my birch box and this is a pure example of why I love Birchbox so much. I never would have tried this if it hadn't come in my Birchbox and I'm so so glad that I have discovered it. But the way that this works is after you're done styling your hair you just spritz a little bit of it into the ends. I'll demo it for you right here. So you just kind of spritz it into the ends and just kind of rub it a little bit and it just kind of revives your hairstyle and what I really like the most about it is it makes the ends of my hair more touchable and soft. I find that when I'm styling my hair with hairspray and dry texturizing spray and dry shampoo, it just makes my hair feel really dry and brittle. 
So this makes my hair feel like hair again, and I really, really like it. I have been using it very frequently, and surprisingly, a little goes a long way, and the product lasts a lot longer than you would think. I've been using this for a couple of weeks, like probably three or four times a week, and it's still got probably half the bottle left, so that's definitely a plus too. It lasts a long time, so I would definitely recommend this. I'm totally getting a bigger size of it, and I love it. I'm gonna start off with three that I actually mentioned in last month's favorites because I'm a cheater and I had only had them for a day, but I decided that I loved them so much already. And I mean, I guess it's a good thing. My first impressions were really good and now after a month of using them, I still am in love with them. So the first is the Dior Skin Forever Foundation. This is a kind of demi-matte finish. It's not super matte, but it is more on the matte side than the luminous side. And Jaclyn Hill has actually been talking about this foundation too for the last couple of weeks. So it kind of validates me that I found this on my own and she, who I totally respect every single opinion in her little brain when it comes to makeup, she loves this. So I am so validated that she loves it too and I'm not alone. But I love this foundation so much and honestly there is not a single thing I could ask more of it. It has SPF 35 in it and it has shine control which I really need in this time of year and I am really just in love with this. It has totally replaced my It Cosmetics CC Cream, which I still love, by the way, and I still have it, but I have used this every day that I've worn makeup since buying it, so that's saying something, because you guys know I love my It Cosmetics CC Cream. But yeah, that's the Dior Skin Forever Foundation. Love it a lot. And then the other product that I mentioned last month that I was loving are the Dior Lacquer Sticks. I have them in two shades. One is Underground, and it's a really pretty rosy mauve shade. And here's a little swatch of it. This is just a beautiful everyday shade. I really love it. The formula is super creamy and super pigmented and glossy looking almost. And then the other shade I have is Sassy, which is a really pretty fuchsia shade. So between these two, I've got my nude lip covered and my bold lip covered. So I really, really, really love these and would definitely recommend checking them out if you are at all interested. I love Dior lip products and I feel like I say that in every video, but they just have some of the best lip products out there. Next I have a couple of concealer products. The first, surprisingly, even to me, is a color corrector. I have not been in on the color correcting train. I just feel like it's an extra step that's not necessary, that I don't want to deal with, that I don't need to deal with, and so I haven't been really into it, but I was digging through my sample bag the other day. I actually have a huge bag full of samples. One moment, I'll show it to you. This is my sample bag that I just keep a bunch of samples of things that I want to try, and, and I was digging through here, and I found a little mini of the Urban Decay Naked Skin Corrector in Peach which this is my one of my favorite concealers of all time. So I figured I love the formula. Why not try it in this shade to see if I like the color correcting aspect of it. So I tried the peach for my under eyes and I really, really liked the effect. I liked how it was really good at correcting the darkness under there and then putting concealer over it, it just felt like my eyes were brighter and I was more awake and it didn't feel super cakey or thick under my eyes. So I went ahead and bought a full size and I've really been loving it. I use it every day and now I really notice a difference when I don't use it. So I would totally recommend this if you suffer with dark under eyes like I have. And yeah, it's really, really, really nice. And I think this is going to last me a lot longer than my concealer does because I'm not going to be using it all over my face. And then this product, it's kind of a spoiler alert. If you follow my new product of the month series, this is the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer in the shade Vanilla. And it is a pot concealer that is actually kind of on the matte side, but it's also surprisingly creamy. And I freaking love this. I have been using two concealers for a really long time. I was using the Glossier Stretch Concealer for my under eyes and then the Urban Decay Concealer for the rest of my face. And this one actually does both jobs really well. So I can use this for both my blemishes around my face and my under eyes. 
So I've been using this one pretty exclusively for the last month, but I really, really have been liking it a lot. And I'm not gonna get into too much detail because I wanna make sure that I go into more detail for that video in a week or two, but I've really been enjoying this. So I would definitely recommend checking it out if you are interested at all. And then my last makeup product is the YSL Volupt Sheer Candy in number six. I think this is number six. It's a really, really pretty sheer red lip product. I love the scent of these. They smell like mango. And at first I really did not like the scent, but I, now I'm addicted to it. And it's such a pretty bright springy shade. And like I said, it's very sheer. So it kind of fades really beautifully on your lips. And I have just been loving it. It's been my go-to like day-to-day -day work bright lipstick. I tend to not wear super bright lips to my office just because I'm not constantly wanting to pull out a mirror and check my lipstick, make sure it's not on my teeth, they're spread all over my face. I like something more like balmy or a nude shade for the typical work day. So I've really been enjoying this because it kind of feeds my bold lip spirit without having to go all out with a normal lipstick. <laughs> Next up I have a food favorite, which is pretty rare for me. This is something that they just started stocking at Trader Joe's within the last couple of months, and it is the RX bars. I've actually been eating these for a couple of months now, and I really, really, really like them. This one's my favorite. It's the coconut chocolate one. And as you can see, it's got egg whites, almonds, cashews, dates, and that's pretty much it. It doesn't have a bunch of weird chemicals and things in the bar, and it just tastes really, really, really good. They are super chewy. That's one thing Ryan doesn't like about them. They get stuck in your teeth a little bit, but if I'm going to have a protein bar, then this is the one I'm going to go for because I hate the normal protein bars. I just don't like them at all. The flavor is so disgusting to me. So I've really been liking these. It's a good source of protein and it's a good snack if you need one in the middle of the day. And yeah, I really, really like these and would totally recommend checking this one out or the peanut butter ones are also really good. And that's all I have for physical favorites. I don't have any movie favorites this month. We haven't really gone to the movies that much, surprisingly. I did go see Beauty and the Beast again, so I guess I'll shout that one out for the second month in a row, but that is such a great movie. I took my mom to go see it, and she really liked it that time, and yeah, that's all of the movies that I have seen this month. I um, I do have a couple of TV favorites. I, I go through really weird phases. I'll either want to read or watch TV, and whenever I'm reading, I will just like fire through a book. Like I can read a book in 24 hours if I have to. Like I am just zoned in. That's all I want to do. And then when I'm not reading, I get into TV shows and I just binge watch TV shows. I guess what I'm saying is I love binge watching and reading things. <laughs> and so I have binge watched two shows this month that I really, really loved. The first is Grace and Frankie on Netflix. It's a Netflix original series. And the other one's a Netflix original series too. So I guess Netflix is just killing it in the TV space. But Grace and Frankie is a really cool TV show. It's got Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin in it. And it's about two couples um, in their 70s who the husbands announced that they are leaving their wives because they are in love with each other and are gay and just kind of the antics and what dating in your 70s looks like and just how America treats the older population. And it's just such a funny, really eye-opening show. I really, really love it. It's very lighthearted, but it also makes you think about all of the things that come with being in your 70s that as a 24 year old, almost 25 year old, don't really think about. So I've really been enjoying it. It's really good. I would totally recommend checking it out if you haven't seen it already. And the second TV show that I watched was definitely not lighthearted at all. It was very difficult to watch. It was 13 Reasons Why. And the reason I loved it so much is it just had so many lessons that I think every person in America could learn. There's a lot about slut shaming and things being taken out of context and the difficulty of female friendship and 
rumors being spread and suicide and depression and anxiety. It just shed a light on so many different things and it took a lot of different perspectives on a lot of heavy situations. I thought it was something really important for teenagers and even young adults and older adults to watch these days because sometimes there are people out there that need help and you need to pay attention to the signs that they might need your help and if you haven't seen it already I would really really recommend watching it. Just remember that nobody's perfect and even the character who the show is centered around isn't perfect and it's not any one person's fault whenever something horrible or horrific happens but it is your responsibility as a person to take care of the people around you and pay attention to them and just notice if they're crying out for help so anyway kind of a negative sour note to end on but i haven't really had a ton of music favorites this month not any new music favorites at least I know the ACL lineup is coming out soon, so I'm really pumped for that. But um, yeah, I, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And I hope that I didn't totally make it a downer with that last favorite. But I really enjoyed the entire month of April. I can't wait to see what May has in store. And yeah, if you guys have any recommendations for videos that you would like to see, please, 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 I'm officially begging, leave a comment down below. I need ideas and I would love to hear from you guys. I have 143 subscribers the last time I checked and that means there are 143 people that probably have other types of videos that they like watching. So let me know what your favorite videos to watch on YouTube are or if you have any cool ideas for videos that you want me to do and I will definitely work to make that happen. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will hopefully see you in the next one. Hit the subscribe button on the screen here and also check out one of my more recent videos up here as well. And yeah, that's all I've got. So I will see you next time. Bye guys.